with MIA Microflight once again and in this video I'm going to be talking about this Cessna 182 uh, it's a model I did back in 2006 when I was posting in RC groups I started this model out of uh, a little bit out of boredom and it's one of those projects that you know when you get the itch to f build something you build it and sometimes it just doesn't reach its uh, completion because other projects come into play as is the case with uh, a lot of the stuff that I do. You know, a lot of the stuff that I do for myself gets put on the back burners because I need to, uh, you know, when I get busy with uh, orders I need to take care of those first and then these things have to be um, done uh, whenever I have the time. So back in 2006 I started with the notion of making this an indoor flyer. This is a six foot uh, wing. It's a fairly large uh, model and it's uh, as we see it here with the uh, weight at the front uh, to simulate the motor you don't see the weight it's inside the um, cowl but uh, this model is coming out at about two and a half pounds it's strictly made from uh, balsa blue uh, foam this is quarter inch uh, fan fold material and uh, paper the trims are done in uh, just uh, color tape, packaging tape, and it, you know, just to keep everything very, very lightweight, very simple. The model needs a little more uh, work. As you can see, the wing, it's done in, in paper, like I, I said. Uh, and I know that paper is not the, uh, you know, the greatest for covering uh, models, but uh, it is something that I had uh, selected at the time because I wanted to do something similar and just. Uh, you know, I wanted to put this rather quickly, and I think when I got the parts uh, on my CNC machine, all of the blue foam parts are done on the CNC machine. I had to design this model on the uh, computer so that it would uh, give me all the parts out of a um, 18 by 36 uh, sheet of foam. I think I used uh, two sheets in cutting all the ribs and the, um, the sides of the uh, aircraft. The balsa is used in uh, the traditional method for uh, creating reinforcements along the uh, wing and also along the uh, fuselage. You have the uh, stringers that complete the, uh, the shape of the model and that's what you're seeing here that are kind of showing in between the, the foam. And like I said, I did this, uh, once I had all the parts, I think I assembled this in one night that was kind of really eager to uh, build this and see what uh, this would look like you know with some of the materials that I would employ here and um, and so the project I put on, on hold and I just haven't had time to to do this uh, to finish it it's got some of the wires because I was going to uh, put some lights at the ends here that's what the wires there the wires right. the landing gear is very very simple as you can see it here it's just nothing more than a piece of uh, uh, tubing uh, nylon tubing that has been uh, bent in a um, trapezoid shape and because it has uh, sockets at the end of the tubing all I'm doing here is just inserting the landing gear which is uh, carbon rods with a piece of uh, brass tubing which has been painted uh, in black as a coupler on the side there to create the uh, to create that angle for the wheel and the axle is also carbon rod this is three I, I think these are three and a half millimeter carbon rods the landing gear at the front is a little more elaborate and once again it, it is to mimic the landing gear that is typical on the Cessnas and if we can see that it's got a little bit of suspension there and I did that also with nylon tubing just to um, create the uh, the spring here this is all nylon that's been folded in half to create a, a spring and I did that with a bit of brass tubing for the uh, bearing or the uh, um, tubing where the axle rides in and it's just supporting the wheel like that the U-shape is also done with nylon material, just uh, you know, folded and bent and flattened and drilled for the axle of the wheel. So it's very, very lightweight. 
And I mean, I, I could do this a lot better with uh, a, a metal, with a brass, steel, even if I wanted to. But this is where my mind was at at the time that I did this. I wanted to employ all these materials that uh, I show here uh, at the time that I did this. So I may end up, um, I may end up uh, redoing the landing gear with uh, some uh, better materials. You know, we're talking about 2006, and now we are at 2017. So we're talking, you know, 11 years that I have not done anything with this model, believe it or not. I mean, this is when I printed this, uh, and this is, uh, yeah, this was done in 2000, January 2006 is when I posted this, when I was starting to post. I posted some photos, and people were showing some interest. And uh, I talked a little bit about it, and and that's how this, uh, you know, got uh, born. But I had to finish the wing, and the purpose of this video was just to uh, bring out the model and force me to, uh, now that I have a little time, and it just forced me to finish this, and I uh, just got to grab a, you know, a bunch of sheets of uh, paper and just finish the wing. Um, White paper, you know, I, I know some people are going to be saying, you know, a paper, well, paper tends to absorb moisture. Absolutely, you know, it, it does absorb uh, moisture and, you know, it's not as durable as uh, monocoat and some of these uh, synthetic uh, coverings that are used typically on balsa uh, built uh, airplanes. But like I said, you know, at the time I just wanted to get creative with paper and, and balsa and, and foam and even the nylon parts that I just explained that I use for the landing gear. Uh, you know, very simple, very, very inexpensive stuff, something that I could throw together in a, in, in a day, and this, how this got started in one of these. I mean, I got all kinds of airplanes that, that I've designed uh, through the years, um, mainly ultralights, but I wanted to get this model out, and it's a reason to, uh, to finish it. So this, this is the purpose of this video, too, is just to uh, give me a little inspiration, self-inspiration, if you will. This model does have ailerons, but I have to modify the wings so that the uh, balsa uh, trailing edge there uh, has provisions, you know, for hinging, and I can install ailerons that are flush with the wing uh, geometry. So I have to modify that, and I have to modify the ribs. At the time, I wasn't going to employ um, um, ailerons or flaperons even, but. Um, I was just going to make this a three-channel operation, and it'll fly three-channel just fine because it's so lightweight. For this size of a model, at 2.3 or 2.2 uh, and a half pounds, you know, it's it's fairly fairly uh, lightweight. Uh, you know, you have probably seen if you've seen some of these uh, big uh, ultralight airplanes that people fly indoors. You know, those models are are basically floaters. You know, they take off so easy; they basically <laughs> just pop right off the floor. And, and and fly very very slowly and that was the uh, the gist of this uh, project it was to to do exactly that and go take it indoors and fly it although here in Arizona I don't have an indoor field that I can go to uh, close by and so I will be taking this to the you know to the re regular place that I fly all my airplanes you know the open field and it'll do just fine on a calm day I think it's going to be a, a very uh, very satisfying model to fly um, and just as a, a change of pace, although the Cessna 182 is a very, uh, it's, it's in my opinion, overly done. I mean, everybody that has manufactured airplanes has done a Cessna 182 of some type, you know, through the years. Uh, but anyway, so I have to finish this project, and I thought I, I captured this in a video and just uh, show my viewers, uh, you know, something that I'm working on, just as a, a little change of pace. This uh, was uh, going to be, uh, let me see what my specification is. Ah, uh, let's see, Finnish airplane, uh, 30 ounces, 30 ounces, that's, uh, let's see, a pound is 16 ounces, two pounds is 32. Uh, conservative uh, estimate at two pounds, that sounds right, at the time that I did this uh, back in 2006. Uh, two pounds, uh, not not counting the the weight of the uh, the engine, which is in this model. I just weighed it at two and a half pounds with the simulated weight, which is inside the uh, the nose of the, the the airplane. You don't see it, but there, there's a uh, measuring tape actually that's creating that weight. 
uh, of simulating the weight of the battery and the engine that I'm going to be installing here. This will fly just fine with a three cell uh, 3200 milliamp battery. I mean, if my 3200 three cell uh, batteries fly my ultralights, which are in the uh, three, four pound range, uh, this, this will, you know, fly excellent, excellent, even a two uh, cell. So I might opt for a two cell operation here instead of the, the three, just to keep things uh, light weight. Uh, I did, uh, in my specification, I did call for uh, some standard 4H300 uh, type servos, and these are, we're talking about technology, you know, from 2006. Um, RCD, I don't know what that stands for, I don't recall that. RCD-35, seven channel receiver, I guess that's the receiver brand. Uh, switch harness, uh, leads, nine ounces. Uh, for the uh, for that assembly with the uh, servos, four servos uh, motor, I was looking into a Mabuchi uh, 550 equivalent to a Speed 600, as I was talking earlier on the um, brands or the motors, uh, carbon technology. 600 watt, even 600 watt is way overkill for this. Uh, a 200 watt will, will fly this just fine. Um, assuming at 100 watt per pound being lightweight actually uh, i'm going to take that back uh, 300 watt will fly this 100 watt per pound uh, uh, rule of thumb uh, oh at six speed 600 with gearbox 10 ounces a prop 11 by 7.5 ounces uh, an esc with bsc 1.5 ounces three cell 2000 milliamp hour battery Four ounces total flying weight it says uh, three and a half pounds is what I figured back then but as, this, as I just uh, weighted this uh, again it's coming out at actually at two and a half pounds with brushless motors now the speed 600 that I was considering back in the year uh, of course it's a lot heavier almost twice as heavy as a, as a current brushless uh, motor for equal uh, wattage uh, wing loading, it says uh, 55 over 6, which is uh, 55, 55, I believe, ounces per uh, 6 square feet. So we're at a 9.1 ounce per square foot uh, wing loading. It's very lightweight. Uh, I'm averaging the, the wing area to 6 square feet, but in essence, it's slightly under due to the slight taper of the wing. This is what I wrote in my specification that I described in RC Groups when I posted this uh, project uh, back in 2006 of January. Uh, for reference, I mentioned here that uh, if we take the Hobby Lobby 6-foot piper, now 6-foot piper being the, uh, the wing uh, uh, dimension, a piper of uh, six feet at those weigh at 7.3 to 10 pounds even. This Cessna model is under one half its weight for about the same size of the model. Yet, if I go with smaller servos, receivers say at four ounces total for these items, the overall weight can be about 50 ounces. Change the DC 550 motor with a brushless one. I was already talking with a brushless uh, uh, option there. And the weight can be further minimized to another five ounces, thus the two and a half pounds that I arrived at today as I'm uh, doing this video here. Just before I started the video, I weighed the model with a, with a weight at the nose and simulate the components that are not there yet, including the battery. So if I go with a brushless setup, I think the overall flying weight will be about 45 ounces. 45 ounces. Um, yeah, that sounds right. So... What do you guys think? Uh, when I posted uh, this uh, in RC Groups back in January of 2006, uh, title Six Foot Balsa and Paper Cessna 182. I am going to try to finish this uh, sometime uh, this coming weekend. This is, uh, we are Sunday today. By next week, uh, I should be uh, finished with this little guy and I can take it to the field and do a you know, just a, a video and put it up on my channel so you guys can see how this flies. But anyway, this is the old paper, balsa, and foam Cessna 182. I have not seen similar models. I mean, there are people that build uh, from uh, all kinds of materials, but using paper as a covering, I have not seen airplanes done this way. And once again, I know there are 
some of viewers who are going to uh, wonder why I use uh, paper here. I just wanted to fool around with that and, and see how this would uh, turn out. Uh, if I need to redo this with the covering uh, material, the typical mounting coat and stuff that uh, is used in, for balsa airplanes, I can always uh, shoot some new parts to the CNC machine. That's not a big deal. You know, a few minutes to do that, cut some new parts, and then uh, use, uh, you know, balsa and, and redo this model. The framework is not, uh, it's, it's really not that hard. You know, once you get the bulkheads uh, assembled and aligned, uh, pretty much everything just falls into place because the CNC machine has done all the pocketing for the stringers that you see made out of balsa for all the ribs and for all the uh, bulkheads that make up the fuselage uh, of the model. So it goes uh, fairly quick, you know, once you get those parts uh, set up. Um, the most te tedious work is when you cover, you know, with, with uh, mounted coat and you have to iron that and you have to shrink the material and especially at the, at the ends there. Uh, it's something that I never look forward to when I do these things, and I think that's one of the reasons why I elected to use paper here because you can just simply cut the paper that comes in sheets eight and a half by eleven. Everybody has you know printer paper, uh, and you can just overlap the you know where where it needs to be overlap on the uh, on the ribs for reinforcement, and uh, you know you can have a, a you know just a great flying model, you know. As long as it doesn't get wet or you're not exposing it to high moisture, you know, that should be fine. Even if it's exposed to moisture, I think, you know, the, the paper will dent a little bit because of moisture absorption into the uh, paper, but it's, not, it's nothing that, you know, you can't resolve with just a little, um, with a hair dryer, you know, just run it over and it'll tighten up again. Here in Arizona, the humidity is very low. You know, it's not like in Chicago. When I used to live in Chicago, the humidity was very high, and so... Um, uh, and so flying this would be a little more uh, of a concern. So uh, because, you know, I live here in Arizona and most of the time it's, it's fairly dry heat, you know, there's no problem. I have had, believe it or not, over the span of these many years that I'm talking about, uh, let me just go back to the model so you can see it, just the quality of the, the surface um, that has retained over a span of 11 years. This is 2006 when I built this. And you can see the, you know, the paper is intact. And this is nothing more than paper uh, glued with uh, a glue stick. You know, the Elmer's uh, glue sticks. You know, I just ran the, the glue stick along the, uh, the edges here. And then I overlapped the paper. I have to cut the, the paper and, uh, in, in sections, you know, for the rib. And each rib gets, gets its own section of paper. And I think the way I did this, I folded. Yeah, I did the, the, the paper. I ran it half. Uh, way on top and half on the bottom just to create this nice curved surface on this uh, leading edge here and so I just have to continue doing that the only thing is that uh, the uh, the paper has gotten just a little dusty from being in my garage uh, just as you see it here I never covered this model and so it's a little bit darker than than the uh, than a brand new white sheet so I may have some little imperfections but I can also do this I mean uh, I can also uh, spray coat uh, the the paper with 50% um, alcohol mixed with uh, acrylics. You know, acrylic is a, a little a plasticky uh, paint, and when you mix it with uh, alcohol and you spray it, you um, you create a nice. Uh, uh, it almost seals the, the the surface that is being uh, uh, painted. So I think that that might that might work a little bit better. Once I get the all the wing covered, and it's uh, you know I'm, I'm going to run the a hair dryer right over that just to tighten the uh, the paper a little bit but it's, as is it's, it's just fine um, so why I may do that I'm the only tricky part is going to be this area here uh, well if I cover it with a clear with a clear coat I might do that for the fuselage because the fuselage is pretty much complete but the wing here uh, might um, I might need to do this the other thing I can do is just remove the paper that's already there it's not hard, you know, just uh, take an exacto blade and just uh, trim around and put new paper. So I might do that if the paper, uh, if the shades of paper are not, uh, you know, it's just too uh, distractive. But there's a Cessna made out of foam, balsa, and paper. 
There's, there's the the weight that I was talking about at the front. Just this measuring tape. It's a big measuring tape. Uh, there's the front wheel. It's kind of yellowed. I'm going to change these wheels because these I bought these uh, also from. Um, I think these are some of the early wheels that I used to buy from um, Balsa Products. You used to have these very nice. These wheels are great for indoor flying for ultralight airplanes, but I think I'm going to change these with uh, some new ones uh, that are, they have a little stiffer uh, foam. I don't store the models sitting on the wheels, therefore you know you don't you don't have the deformity that happens with a soft foam if you have a, especially with heavy models you know that, that sit on the ground you know that the foam wheels tend to deform so I hang these or I put them on top of uh, uh, supports you know to hold the model with the wheels off the ground or off the a flat surface so they don't rest on them uh, the wing separates uh, from here let me see if I can do this uh, with one hand and you know you can see how the wing is separates here and these are just carbon carbon rods here and they lock with this uh, sandwich here the sandwich also has reinforced with a uh, and this I believe is basswood basswood or plywood reinforcement here for the for the foam so it's it's pretty pretty sturdy there and I also have uh, basswood reinforcements on the corners here just to create my, my frame for the uh, for the window you know this is uh, it's pretty pretty sturdy and this simply inserts right in there. It's kind of a, a, a precise fit. Boom, and the wing just sits right over the sides of the, the model. I'm going to be vacuum forming the uh, the windshields here out of clear plastic. So I have to create the the forms for the window. And this can certainly uh, take uh, you know some details on the inside. It's got plenty plenty room inside. To do uh, to do a lot of a lot of neat details, you know, like uh, seats, pilots. Uh, I mean, my my 1.25 pilots will fit here beautifully, uh, and they will look the, the part too. And I have to put details, you know, make a control panel here for the front, just like the Cessna has. So that'll go right here in the front, and. Um, you know the battery will have to sit. Uh, I think this model is coming at uh, let's see at 25 to 30 percent. I think the battery is probably going to have to go a little bit further back here. So I'm, I might need to make a uh, pocket for the battery just to between these two um, bulkheads here, just to give me the proper CG once I put the motor and the the servos. There's the the servo uh, box there. I need to cut some holes for the servos, which will have the rods that will go through the fuselage to the back of the uh, elevator and rudder. These have nylon hinges. This is your typical hinging for balsa airplanes. So you can probably see the hinge, the shadow here a little bit here. So these have hinges and actually this is not a, a real hinge, it's just a piece of nylon material, just a flat sheet that I uh, kind of heated in the, uh, in the middle to create a crease. This is super easy to pivot. Likewise in the elevator section here. You know, we can see the probably see the hinging, and um, very fluid, very very fluid. There's a light that goes here, and so this has already the wires inserted. That's what that wire is for. And so this is a, uh, I think this is a blinker. It's got the socket already for just an LED. You know, just plug it in. And uh, I just have to m make sure that my plus and minus are correct here. The LEDs, uh, you need the, uh, the anode and cathode, you need to install those correctly, otherwise you'll burn the LED if you install it backwards. So anyway, this is the MIA Microflight Cessna 182, made from uh, foam, balsa, and paper. This is Mario once again, thank you for watching.